Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. This is a slightly different video to what I usually do. It's an all-encompassing how to use Microsoft Project start to finish, just the basics. All right, let's get started. So as you can see here, I have a blank instance of Microsoft Project. I have not opened up any project. I've just opened up Microsoft Project for the first time. This is the 2021 version, very latest. But everything I show you today, for the most part, is accessible from previous versions as far back as 2010. All right, so let's get started with Microsoft Project. So we launch it, pretty daunting. First thing you wanna do is click on File. This is the backstage area where you can see all your standard Microsoft Office things like opening, closing. But Microsoft Project, you know, there's, there's a few different things that are relevant to just Microsoft Project in here, outside of just the open and close. So you can create new projects, different types of projects. You can see your recent projects here. You can search your recent projects. You can pin projects that you open on a daily basis. So if you're coming in here and you know working on four different projects at a time, pin those projects so you're easily able to find them. Another key thing when you're first getting started is to click on info. And this is where you can see all the information about the project, whether you're connected to Project Online, etc., etc. So the first thing we're going to do is click new and I'm just going to create a blank project. You can see more about sprints and waterfall in my other videos, but I'm just going to stick with blank project. It's basics, easy to use. Here's your blank schedule. Let's go back to file info and you'll now see that I'm seeing all the various information about this particular project. The start date, finish date, schedule from. These are all incredibly important pieces of information that we need to capture about our project when we first set it up so that when we schedule a task, that task is scheduled from the project start date, for example. The status date, when was this project last updated? What calendar are we gonna use? Whether that be eight to five Monday through Friday? Are we working in a different country? Are we working different hours, 980 schedules? Are we working um, in the Middle East where they have Monday as a, as a holiday day and Saturday is a is a working day right things like that you can set up those project calendars and this is all various important information tracking method 100% complete in here first thing you want to do when you set up your new project is set the start date I want my project to start off on let's say March 5th that's a Saturday that's my mother's birthday um, some of the information here you want to look at is this calendar, right? You might want to set up different calendars. I have videos for that. Go take a look, subscribe to my channel. Uh, but you definitely want to set up a calendar for this, um, whether that be from scratch or if you want to use one of the out-of-the-box calendars. You can see standard here, but you've also got a 24-hour working calendar. You can do that in the project information area. All right, let's jump into the project. So we're going to come out of the backstage area, and we now have Microsoft Project. I'm going to break this interface down to make it really simple and easy to use. The file is the backstage, same as any Office application. Now, the first thing you want to do is look at the project ribbon. This is everything, high level information about the project that you want to set up. Project information being the number one key thing. Here's that project start date again. Um, do we want to schedule from the project start date? Generally, nine times out of ten, that's what you're going to want to do. You're not going to plan backwards by starting from the project finish date. That's a terrible idea the calendar that you want to use. Those two pieces of information are incredibly important. You can create your own calendars, set those up, or just go with the standard eight to five Monday through Friday with no exceptions. Right? There's no vacation days, there's no holidays. So you definitely want to set up at least those public holidays for your calendar. That can all be done in the change working time area. You can just come in here and put in the holidays for the standard calendar. Anyway, once you've got that, that's really important building blocks for the project because that's going to control the working days, etc. So start date, calendar, check, check, good stuff. All right, um, so next things, what do we want to do? Well, I want to do things to tasks. I want to create some tasks. I want to build out my work breakdown structure. So once you're done in the project tab, whenever you want to do something to a task, you're going to be in the task tab. This is where we can create modify, update, link. We can um, 
set the information for a particular task, change the task calendar if we like. Right? We can do all different things to tasks in the task ribbon. In the resource ribbon, this is where we're going to do everything resource related. So when you want to start assigning resources, building out your resource pool, leveling your resources, etc. That will all be done in the resource ribbon. I'm going to skip over the report ribbon for now. We're going to look at the view ribbon. This is pretty unique to Microsoft Project as opposed to other Office applications in the fact that if you think about Microsoft Project, it is a combination between an Excel workbook and an Access database. The reason I say that, and you're going to learn more about it, is we have these columns here. Each There are many other columns, but you don't see them all. Right? Think of these as database entries. This is all your different data points you can enter about a particular task. So it is kind of like a database. This information is captured, even if it's negative data or you know null data, it is there. right? So it's a, it, the views allow you to see different collections of information. So if I want to see the Gantt chart view where I see all my tasks, and it'll make more sense if I put my first task in here, task one. Right, we'll come back to the fact that this is manually scheduled. I'm going to make this auto scheduled in the future. Highly recommend you do that. The default out of the box, as I said, is is manually scheduled. Do you want to switch that to auto schedule? We'll talk more about that later. I'm going to retro retroactively make this one auto scheduled. You can see when you do that, you get the start and finish dates. We'll come back to that. It's not important right now, but what we can see is data is being populated. If I want to see tasks, I want to be in a task view. And you can see, oh look, this section of the view ribbon is called task views. I don't want to manipulate different tasks. I want to see a network diagram, a calendar view, a task board. If you're using Kanban, I've got videos on that. Take a look, subscribe to my channel. Nice plug there. If you want to see resource views, so information about resources. If I come in here and click on resource sheet, and I have my resources, I'm going to put Tom Henry in here real quick. And James D. He asked me for a shout out, so there you go. So you can see I've got two resources. I can set up the standard rates. I always go with $60 an hour. And we can see their base calendars. They're working on the standard calendar. It will always default to the project calendar here. Okay. If you give a project calendar and you've added exception days, it will add those as default for your resources. You can also change the calendar for individual resources. The resource calendar will, in fact, overwrite the project calendar for those resources. So think about it. You've got a project. It's working 8 to 5 Monday through Friday. But if you have a resource that works 24-7, it's going to get that task done a lot quicker. So the resource calendar overwrites. Anyway, I digress. Resource views. Very handy to see in the resource level information. Data. Here we can highlight certain things. We can filter certain things. We can swap out the table. This is a really important one. This is the entry table used for changing, uh, entering resources. In fact, the Gantt chart view, which is a task view also has the entry table. Those are the default for the resource sheet and the Gantt chart and many other views in Microsoft Project have the entry table as a default. You can change that if I want to see cost information. Now I'm just looking at my resource names and how much their cost on my project is. Right, right now they don't have any. We can come back to this if you like. Tables are really handy. Kind of like just swapping out the data within a particular view. So a view in Microsoft Project is easy to explain when we are in the Gantt chart view. We have a chart on the right hand side. I can see my task here on the Gantt chart. There are many different charts available. We have ones that display different graphics and all kinds of different things, network diagrams, whatever you want. So it's a combination of screen elements. On the left hand side you have a table, on the right hand side you have some kind of chart or graphical depiction, I'm going to call it. It can be so many different things. And it also has filters associated with it, highlighting associated with it, and groupings associated with it. Also, tables as part of the view. right? So these things are all part of a view signature. Very, very particular to Microsoft Project. All right, so that's really important information to know. right? You can also adjust the format for a particular view that you're in, in the Format tab or ribbon in Microsoft Project. In fact, if I'm in a different view, Resource Sheet view, you'll see that this is, it changes Resource Sheet format. If I'm in the Task Usage view, Task Usage format. So this allows you to apply different formatting styles to a particular view. 
So the format view is a context sensitive, sorry, the format ribbon is always context sensitive to the view that you're in. So it changes. Let's go back to the Gantt chart. So we've got file, we're good with that. Tasks, when we want to manipulate tasks. Resource, when we want to manipulate resources. Project, when we want to update high level information about the project. The view, to change out the view. Handy to do that, get used to and familiar with those different views. And then the Gantt chart format allows you to apply formatting preferences to the view that you're currently in. Last but not least, the report allows you to create all different kinds of reports. I have a whole video on reports. I'm not going to get into it in this video. You can create or use the out of the box dashboard and reports here within Microsoft Project to show up your data in different and various ways. Let's break this down real easy in Microsoft Project. So next thing I want to do is talk about project options. File, options. This is how we set up our preferences in Microsoft Project. I'm going to show you two or three quick things that's going to make your life so much easier. So uh, date format, I always come in here and make this this 12809. I don't care about what the day of the week is, right? When you're project planning, you don't really care so much. It's not going to schedule work to be done during the week. That's all I really care about. Um, display, you can actually come down here and check the entry bar checkbox. It's going to give you a Excel-like input bar. Let's take a quick look. Boom, there it is. So when I'm in here, I can easily manipulate what's going on. That is a money tip right there. So back to options display um, you can change certain things in here I never really do anything other than add the entry bar and the schedule here as you can see my project day week starts on a Sunday if it's a Monday for you go for it but you know it's always going to acknowledge the project calendar where work only takes place on a Monday through Friday 8 to 5 fiscal year you might want to adjust that when you're doing calculations on, on costs according to your fiscal year All right. Microsoft, it's uh, July is the start of the new fiscal year, so you may have a different one. Start and finish dates. Make sure if you do adjust this, that, that it, it reflects your project calendar, right? So create the calendar first, and then come in here and adjust this to reflect it. But most companies are going to work with 40 hours a week, 80 hours a day, unless you're in Europe or something. I usually leave these alone. This is an important one. New task created, auto schedule. I already changed that down here earlier, but you can actually make it so that for all new projects, haha, we overwrite the standard auto scheduled to be, uh, the, the default manually scheduled to be auto scheduled for all new projects, so I never have to do that again. Pretty nice trick there. Um, uh, in save, I just hazard against auto save here because if you do that, um, it will actually remove your undos. So if you save your project every time you do it, you can no, no longer undo. So hazard away from that. Advanced, automatically add new resources in tasks. I always uncheck that one because whenever you put a resource name into the resource names column, it will just add that person as a new resource that's zero dollars per hour. If I remove that and come in here and put a resource name, Tom, it's not Tom Henry, maybe it's Tom H, right? It's going to prompt me. This person is not in my resource pool. Do I want to add them to my resource pool? And at this point, I say, Oh no, it's probably Tom Henry. I've got a duplicate. And it forces you to come into that resource sheet view and create out your resources in the correct way, as opposed to just willy nilly typing in resource names into the resource names column. Anyway, back to here in the advanced tab, I believe I was, and scrolling down. Um, I usually come in here for the minutes, make that M, H, D, W, and M, O, and Y. The reason I do that is to save real estate on the screen. You will see from instead of one day, it's now going to be one D. So I can collapse this column. You can see the same thing applies to my date formatting that I've changed. Real estate is everything. A lot of us work on tablets. A lot of us work on laptops or single screens you know, out in the field. It is everything to have that real estate. I hope you like that tip. Um, so there's another thing I do. You can also do that for all new projects. So you're not doing this for every single project. Good secondary tip there. I recommend you do this for your Microsoft project so you never have to do this again. Show the project summary tiles. That's a great tip. Make sure it does that for all projects. You're going to see here we're going to get a line zero for the project summary tasks. And you see some of the preferences are to this project or to the all new projects. So just be mindful of that when you are making these changes as you like. 
Um, the I don't ever customize the ribbon. I do customize the quick access toolbar. One of the things I like to do is add undo. I also like to add the scroll to task, and you'll see that I used that earlier. And you're probably thinking, "No, oh, what's that?" Add the scroll to task. That's a great one there. Make sure you uh, switch this to all commands to see everything. Clean up cache and publish is a couple of different project online things that I use as well. But that scroll to task for me is my favorite. I also have the save. It's already there by default. So we press OK on that one. In fact, uh, yeah, that is everything that I like to do. All right, we're now set up to get started on our project. That was a lot of setup, but I think that's going to be handy for you. The rest of it's pretty easy now. So we've got task one. Maybe we'll go for task two also. And task three, task four. Now, the first thing you want to do is create out your tasks. And you're going to give them a duration, five, 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 for example. We also want to create milestones. These are the building blocks of any schedule. If you're project manager, you know what I mean by these things. I'm not going to drill you on project management and building out WBS. That's not for the context of this. I'm going to assume that you are pretty good at that already as a project manager with an access license to probably the greatest scheduling software ever created, Microsoft Project. All right, so let me come in and put a summary task in here. We'll call this phase one. So you see I inserted a task. If you want a summary task, uh, a task to become a summary task, you intent, indent the tasks beneath it, like so. In the task ribbon for manipulating tasks, you use the indent tool here. Nice thing there about Microsoft Project is everything has a tooltip. So if you're not sure what it is, hover over it. And you can now see that I get bolded. Phase one becomes bold and these tasks become beneath it and I can actually roll these up. And you can see I indented the milestone as well. My styling preference is that you can outdent and have the milestones at the same level as your milestones, as your summary task, so that they kind of show up like this. And you can collapse and see just the milestone. All right, so we've got our tasks. We would link those tasks. I have a full video on how to link Microsoft, uh, link tasks in Microsoft Project to the greatest extent. I would take, recommend you take a look at that video. Didn't mean to do that. I'm going to press Control Z on the keyboard. Good to go. Let's link these tasks together. So I use the link task. Remember, I'm always in the task ribbon. I'm, I'm manipulating tasks. I'm in the task ribbon. Great. Now I can see on the right hand side all of my tasks. Five day tasks is a four week project. You probably see up here we have the timeline. This is a great way to highlight key tasks within your project. You can actually right click on any task, milestone, or summary task and click add to timeline. You do the same thing with milestone, add that to timeline. It's a great little reporting tool. You can pull things around, you can pull these out so they're kind of like this, or you can add tasks as well, whatever the case may be. I could add, add everything to my timeline just by selecting a number of tasks here, right click and add those to the timeline as well. Up to you. But I'm actually going to put it out of the way now. Real estate is everything to me. You can get that back at any moment in time by clicking on the view ribbon because we're manipulating the view and show, show me the timeline. All right, and you can see it at all times. It's there in the background being dynamically updated as you update your schedule. All right, so next thing I want to do, I've got my tasks, I've linked them. And I'm not going to get drill into that. I'm going to go and take a look at resources now. So I want to build my team. So to do that, I'm going to come to the view ribbon and click on the resource sheet view. Here's where we create all our resources. There's three different types of resources you can create in Microsoft Project. I have a video on this. It's one of my most popular videos. I'd highly recommend you take a look at that. I'm not going to go into much detail here. Just like and subscribe to my channel. It's called Managing Resources in Microsoft Project. I actually have two different videos as well. Um, I'm going to come in here and create a cost resource. I'm going to call this lumber, right? And in fact, I'm going to call this um, travel cost, right? And that's going to be a cost resource. I'm also going to create a material resource. I'm going to call this bricks. Going too fast there, I'm making a couple of mistakes. I'll slow down a little bit. All right, so there's three different types of resources. I get into that in one more detail in my resource management videos, but I'm going to show you how to create these real quick. Uh, work, material and cost. Work is for people or things that are prorated over time. Cost resources are for fixed costs in your project, such as travel, things that we're invoiced for that we can just charge that back to the project so we have a total cost of our project. 
Materials are things that you want to track on a unit by unit basis. You can specify how much a unit is, right? So for bricks and also the material label. If you expand this column out, it actually says material label, which is uh, counterintuitive there. So we're going to say that we'll do this in pallets. Right, so we've got bricks in pallets, $500 per pallet. Uh, cost resources, when we actually assign that resource to the task, at that point we would specify the cost for that particular task. All right, so we've got our project set up, we've got our resources pool created. Now what I want to do is start assigning them. A couple of different ways to do that. Again, I have a video on this, so I'm not going to get into too much detail. I'm just going to come in here and use the assign resources dialog. I love this dialog because you can assign the same resource to multiple tasks like so or you can assign multiple resources to multiple or single tasks it's really nice and kind of you can work in the background and it's kind of like a widget very much unlike any other windows uh, um, pop-up right you can work in the background and it's still updated here in real time I can also to phase one assign my travel and say there's going to be a cost here of $500 right boom so now I'll be able to start seeing the cost of my project racking up pretty quickly. But in Microsoft Project, if you want to find that out, all you need to do is right click, insert the cost column. You can see exactly how much each of your tasks is costing and the overall roll up to the phase. And there we go, we can see the travel is 500 plus the resources assignments are rolling up to 15,000 for the project. In fact, if I only have one phase, if I have more than one phase, then I definitely want to be making use of the project summary task alluded to that earlier. To see the project summary task, we come to the Gantt chart format and I'll check project summary task. Now I have a project line here. So contrary to popular belief, you do not need to create a project summary task or a task that summarizes the entire project for the highest level. It's already there. All right? And the reason it's there and the reason I recommend it is because when you're looking at the outline number for your work breakdown structure, it would always be offset by one if you had a project summary task. It's there out of the box so that your work breakdown structure is accurate for, for phases. All right, so um, let's take a look at our project overall now. I'm going to uncheck my outline. I'm going to suggest that my project is ready to go. We're really happy with it. We've got a dynamic schedule tasks are linked, we've got our resources assigned, we know how much our fixed costs are going to be, we're ready to start the project. Before you start any project, you're going to want to come in here and set the baseline for the project. You do have the access to set all these different 11 up to 11 baselines. The only one that counts for anything is baseline. In the business we call this baseline zero. You can do that for the entire project or selected task. If you want to do a wave approach to that, you could. I just recommend to do the entire project and you can always update that down the line. Boom, there we go, we've set a baseline. If you want to get more granular, I have a video on baselining as well. Highly recommend you take a look at that. So we've set our baseline now. Um, I think, uh, in fact, let's take a look at that. If we go to the view, I'm going to look at the baseline table. This is one that people don't really look at. In fact, it's not even there on the thing, but we have a ta baseline table. There it is, and we can see all the baseline information. So obviously, when you set the baseline, all it does is copy all that data from the um, start, duration, start, duration, finish, work, and cost, and it copies it into the baseline work. Baseline step, baseline, baseline duration, baseline start, baseline finish, baseline work, baseline cost. It adds them into here. In fact, if I was to clear that baseline, which I can do to show you in real time, clear the baseline. Okay, you see these data go back to zero. So every time you update the baseline, it would actually update this. If you have baseline one, it would update baseline one start, baseline two start, right? so on and so forth, and that's based on um, that's based on the the baseline that you select. But like I said, baseline zero is what is the one that counts. That's where all of our variance is going to come into play. And I'll talk more about variance once we've updated our project. All right. So when you baseline, that is the go between between planning your project and actually executing your project. Now we're ready to start the project. On a weekly basis, I'm going to want to come in here and I'm going to say, right, you know, we're, we're, what, what, what's the date today? Well, right now our project's due to start on 3.7. We're going to pretend it's the end of the week of 3.7. So I'm going to come into the project ribbon. I'm going to click on status date here and we're going to give it a status date. I'm going to say it is uh, 
Only very March 7th. We're going to say it's Friday, the first week of the project. Boom. That's my status date. The reason I do that, that's the date the information in the schedule is valid too. So if anyone comes in here, you could obviously update it on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, but what's the data you're looking at? When did you gather the information from your team to know that that was accurate? Right? Let's switch our baseline table back to the entry table. It's going to make a bit more sense for us. And now we've got our start date set. What I want to do is start updating the project progress. You can do this in a number of ways. I'm going to keep it really simple. I have a video called Updating Project Progress with Microsoft Project. Take a look at it. But essentially, you can come in here and just set market is 50% complete. Right? That task is now 50% complete. Great. However, the work that wasn't completed by Friday needs to be pushed out to the following day. So to do this, what you can actually do you see, we're now, this is the current date, right? We're going to be next Monday working. We're planning around this. It's Friday of this week. That's the start date. I need this chunk of work to go out into the future, which is actually going to detrimentally impact my project, right? So what I'm going to do is, so from here, I'm going to click on the project ribbon, and I'm going to click update project. And you can see by default, it's got the project status date here, which is Friday of this week. I'm going to set the... Uh, you can either you, you can set the percent complete of particular tasks, but that's not what I want to do as part of this. I want to reschedule uncompleted work to start after for that selected task. I want to push out the entire schedule. So for this task one, I'm going to push it out to be after the status date. So I'm going to press OK. Boom. The only the remaining work goes out to Monday. And then the rest of it trickles on. So you know we've updated our project, we've got a negative impact because we we didn't get two days work completed when we were supposed to, so we might be in trouble at this point. So what I'm going to do now is um, fix that, or take a look at it, or look at the variance. So what I'm going to do is come to the view ribbon, and come to the table, and click on the variance table. So I can see we have a, if I expand this out, a start variance on these days of zero, right? We started on time. But for this task, we're starting actually 2.5 days late. Finish variance 2.5 days late because we, you know, only got half the work done. We might, did 50% of the work in the first week, so our project is actually pushed out. Another view I like to use here is the tracking Gantt. It's one of the default views there that you'll see. Oh look, I can't see the task on the Gantt chart. Use that scroll to task button that I added. Boom. Now I can see where we should have been in the dark. And where we are today in the red, we're, we're you know we're a bit behind schedule. That could be an issue. I can also see the cost here, and I could actually insert a new column called actual cost. Right? How much have we actually spent so far? And again, you could use the cost table to see this in even more details. But you can see we've actually spent two and a half thousand dollars on this project. So if you ever want to know, you know this task, this phase, and this project is spent two and two thousand four hundred and sixty-two dollars. All right, well, I think we are pretty much there. On a daily basis, you're going to come in here and update your project until your project is now complete. Thank you so much for watching, and please like, share, subscribe, and take a look at some of my other videos that go into more detail on Microsoft Project, but I really hope you found this useful. Check out the reports to be able to pull out information. I have a whole video on that. don't want to get into that, but you can really start to see some great information, burn downs, things like that in those reports. Take a look at those, it'll make your life easier. Thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe. Cheers.